here to talk about drones this morning. We have uh, two executives. We're going to have uh, Christian Sands from Skycatch and Jay Bregman, formerly the CEO of Halo, who's now starting off on a drone business of his own. So, Christian and Jay, why don't you come on stage? Hi. Hey. Good morning. That's it. So I think probably the best place to start, Kristen, if you could just explain a little bit what we just saw in the video, what your drones were doing there, the complicated apparatus. What was happening there before it yeah, flew all the way um, to Ireland? Early days when I started Skycatch, I was trying to figure out, you know, what was the real opportunity for drones in the business, in the industry. And um, I spent a lot of time in construction and mining, trying to figure out flying drones, trying to figure out what it's really the the, the big demand. And I remember early days, um, I spent quite a few hours just flying these things, collecting data. But it got to a point where I couldn't fulfill that many places. So I decided to build my own robot that basically did all the work for me. So I was very lazy. And, <laughs> and so I did that, and I did it for me. And then eventually, one of these companies decided to buy, buy them. And I, f I figured, why not make a business out of this? And since it's already collecting data for one place, now with a robot, I can collect data for thousands of places. So you guys create 3D scans of construction sites. You let companies monitor their facilities, things like that. How big a business is that really? Is that a little niche where there are a few companies who have need of the services? Or is this something where the skies are just going to be filled with drones doing uh, you know, useful, helpful work for lots of people? That's a great question. Um, you know, today we are experiencing um, a sort of a learning process for a lot of these companies. Construction w markets, construction mining, all these different markets are learning how to use this new data. Because this is a whole brand new data set. Our company focuses on the collection of data, and that's why we build these drones. Uh, but we're not really a drone company. So when it comes to how big of a market this is, you think about every single construction site in the world, every single mine, you know, when it comes to these kinds of markets. Beyond that, there's like millions of other things that pe people can use its data for. Such as? Well, search and rescue, traffic, all sorts of things um, from agriculture, uh, solar management, um, you know, oil and pipes, you know, inspections. Um, all sorts of things that are not really things that come to mind really easily. But there's all sorts, you know, when it comes to visibility, we use maps and visibility all the time, right? So when you go back to the days when we didn't have a map, right, we didn't really depend on it. We, it wasn't top of mind. Today, we open up the maps maybe a few times a day to, to figure out where we're going to go next. That's the way it's going to be where, for everything when it comes to this new data set. So, uh, Jay, I'd like to hear from you, too. Yeah, sure. Why leave Halo? Uh, it's a you know, perfectly respectable <laughs> startup, changing the world, the usual uh, story. Why drop it all to, to change over to drones? Well, I really think that robots, and I got exposed to them about nine months ago, are, are the new mobile. I think they're the new PC revolution. And so I, I agree with everything that uh, has been said before. But also, I, I think we spent a lot of time trying to discover what the you know, real, I won't use the word killer app, because that is a, is a bad uh, connotation. But you know, what, what is the real, um, you know, the app that's going to make this take off? not to use another bad metaphor. Um, <laughs> I think the way it goes is really, you know, kind of the, the internet brought us together. I think that uh, mobile gave us legs, and robots will really give us wings. And it's a question of what we're going to do with those wings. Um, but the, the, the possibilities are virtually endless. So I believe that we're going to see the next PC revolution in these devices. Um, and that's coming sooner than we think. So what are you going to do with these things? Yeah. What's your business going to be? You've been pretty quiet about it, but sure. I think we'd like to hear a little bit about well, uh, where you think I, it's going to go. In looking at this, one of the things that I found confusing as a user was um, whether I was allowed to fly or not aware, um, and whether I could use the drones for commercial purposes or not. Um, I fly internationally. I'm, I'm around the world quite a bit. Uh, and so I found it astonishing that the uh, technology uh, of uh, basically flying robots was completely banned 
land for commercial purposes in the United States. So you're losing millions of dollars a day and also tons of entrepreneurs that would otherwise be looking at this. Um, in other countries, uh, you know, like, uh, like Ireland, there are some sensible licensing schemes uh, you know, in place for commercial use and the ability for you to use them as consumers. But you don't always know where you can fly, when you can fly, and also you don't know what to do or the government doesn't know what to do when things go wrong and people fly where they shouldn't. You know, there have been numerous examples of this. So I think somebody needs to build a trust layer that can be used by all manufacturers and help accelerate the integration of robots into society. So we have hardware engineers, we have software engineers. It sounds like what you're going to be doing is regulatory engineers. You're going to build some technology that lets people operate drones within the regulatory framework of different countries? And, and, and not only, not only uh, within the regulatory framework, but hopefully work together to shape and accelerate and catalyze that framework. Um, so that the technology can get up so that we can figure out together what that, um, you know, what that major application is going to be that's going to be to really kick things off. Silicon Valley is a very libertarian place. There's a, a big sentiment about, you know, keep the government out of the way, we'll innovate and we'll change the world. Do we need regulations for drones? Is that something that, I mean, you're based in San Francisco. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, we believe that we're on the side of the FAA and any regulatory framework because we do, I mean, safety first. I don't want to have some random drone falling on top of my kid, right? So and nobody wants that. And I think that um, the real issue or the real um, help that you can provide here is basically helping these regulatory frameworks to accelerate, like Jay was saying, coming up with ideas and frameworks and, and protocols to help them, right, accelerate the process of being able to fly freely and, you know, safely. How, how, how can we even regulate drones in, in the first place? It, uh, the, the aviation authorities are typically geared for dealing with a very small number of passenger jets, with very limited uh, airspace. Has, if you have hundreds, thousands, millions of drones, how do you get the Federal Aviation Administration in the U.S. or anybody else to actually regulate them? Well, that's the challenge, right? So we've been, ta we've been in talks with the FAA from the beginning, right? Because uh, from fundraising to building the company, everyone asks you if you actually are in talks with the FAA, how are you going to deal with that? So we've been in talks with several different FAA agents, and the real messaging that I get from them is uh, once you put a law in place is how are you going to how are you going to enforce that? You know, law enforcement doesn't have the tools to enforce drones flying around everywhere, right? So that's why what Jay is talking about is very important. They're going to need technology, you know, frameworks so that they can lean on them to regulate these, this new wave of drones flying around. Jay, what did you think? Uh, last week, uh, there were, or maybe two weeks ago, there were uh, reports that uh, drones were flying over seven nuclear power plants in France. Nobody knows who they are with a range, you know, radio communication range of a mile or two miles. It's pretty hard to spot where the operator is, if there even is an operator. Right. How should we feel about that? Should we be freaking out that there are eyes in the sky, we don't know who well, they belong to, or is that something that's not I that big a deal? I think the public response has been pretty universal, that people are scared, and they should be. And that's because people want an override uh, on particularly autonomous robots, and not just drones. Drones are just a special case, but also robots that sit in your home and might take pictures of your children. Um, you know, robots that um, you work in hospitals and may be collecting medical data. You know, the fact is that basically, no matter how autonomous they are, people want to know who that robot belongs to. Um, you know, they want to know what it's doing. Uh, they want to know what its capabilities are, and they want some sort of override on its capabilities to make sure that it doesn't do something that it shouldn't do. I can't uh, believe I'm listening to a bunch of tech entrepreneurs calling for regulations. This is <laughs> perhaps a first for this conference. Uh, another thing I'm very curious about, you guys uh, seem to be a bit more into the uh, bits versus atoms, but there are some big players out there who are talking about drones as a delivery service. Amazon is the highest profile, but it turns out Google is also interested. They want to uh, drop things from a drone with a little uh, un, you know, unspooling, a little package for you. Is that realistic? Uh, is the range good enough? Are the complications of delivering things to a, to a very complicated urban environment, uh, is that even feasible? What do you guys think about using drones as delivery as opposed to data gathering? I think the demand for moving things around, it's always going to be there. And it's just increasing now that we have more goods, more things that we want to move things move around. And also, we've changed uh, in terms of what we expect uh, with the internet. We want everything instantly. So 
being able to get things really fast is actually something that we're demanding today as a society. But I think that delivery is going to be uh, first implemented in areas where it's not highly populated, obviously, right? And I think that's going to happen, but it's not going to happen in the near future. Technology has to evolve. There's a lot of things that needs to be worked out before you can actually have things transport and make it cost efficient, which is the, which is the main thing. Well, for eight years, uh, I ran a company called eCourier in uh, London that basically uh, transported things first on uh, vans and cars, uh, then on smaller motorbikes, and then on even smaller bicycles. Uh, this to me is just an extension of, uh, of that. And so in the future, I think there will be autonomized fleets of, um, uh, of UAVs that will be delivering parcels inside. Now, that's going to take an uh, even longer time than, uh, say, any of the other applications like imaging that we're talking about, because the, the amount of regulatory angles and societal impacts that you have to consider are much higher, and therefore the amount of compliance that you have to look at um, is understandably much higher. So it seems you're like you're delivering to people's houses. You're going uh, going into to you know uh, ur dense urban areas. I, I hope it happens as quickly as possible, but we need guardrails in place when it does. Are, are we going to have uh, just thousands of drones flying over our cities? Is this are we going to have any peace and quiet anymore? I mean, it sounds like you guys are very bullish on this. Do you think the sky is going to be just flooded with drones? Well, I think yeah. it's the same thing with uh, when cars were invented. You know, people were really scared about having you know, roads and cars going everywhere. I mean, look at you, you walk outside, you see cars everywhere, right? They're part of our society now. And we almost turn a blind eye on it, right? It's just part of us. And I think that over time, people will just get used to it. Um, you know, and that's, obviously it's not something that's very pretty. It's, I don't enjoy the fact that this is, these things are going to be flying around, but it's, it's going to happen. So I, I think they will be made pretty, uh, but, but, uh, but that's a, a, my girlfriend's an artist, so I would say that. Uh, but, but, but I believe that we're, we're heading into, insert name of movie here, Back to the Future, you know, where basically you see these lanes of cars that, that fly uh, and potentially drive themselves, uh, of robots that fly and are driving themselves. And actually, I think it the other way around. I think actually that's going to be a better society where things are going to be delivered quicker, they're going to be delivered more safely, and, they're going to and much, much quieter uh, than, than they would be by flying a 747 that's loaded with you know, a certain number of cargo. So I, I think actually this is the beginning of a revolution that is no, no less great than the Industrial Revolution. Yeah, less cars. Huh. We've had a, a lot of uh, changes to get used to. I, two that come to mind uh, are Google Street View, there are photographs of everybody's houses. Google Glass, you have the possibility of people walking around just recording live video. Uh, now we have the possibility of drones recording video everywhere. Do we just need to get used to the idea that we don't have any privacy unless we're inside a Faraday cage inside our house? I, I don't think that that's true. I think, I think basically personal privacy is well and alive and people want it. The only people who, who say people don't want it are the people that basically usually uh, you know, work to, um, uh, to abrogate it. I think what we really need is we need to make that programmatically impossible. So we need to make it so that drones basically uh, don't have the capability to take pictures where they shouldn't, i.e. of children at school. Um, I, and that maybe we even need like a do not call list, right? So you know, I can, I can put my, uh, my name on a list so telemarketers can't call me. May, maybe I need to put my house on a list uh, that, that drones can't take pictures of me or have a smartphone app that, that, uh, you know, that, that keeps drones away. Your own personal no-fly zone. Exactly <laughs> right. <laughs> guys. Well, we're out of time, so thank you very much for coming. We thank appreciate you it. Thank us. you very much. Thank you. Thank you.